Okay, so now what do you do? Um, so what we're going to do, now the quest, just to let you know, you can get other questions, you will get other questions about this lab, but one of the questions you will get will ask you, trace the flow of blood um, from the, and I'll number, I'll give you a number, uh, first, second, third, fourth, or fifth, afferent branchial artery to the dorsal aorta. And you have to give one, um, you have to give one set of vessels that it could flow through en route. Um, if there's, well, if there are a couple of choices, you just pick one. And that's always true. Anytime you're asked to give flow of blood from A to B, you just have to give one possible path. You never have to give all of the possible paths. So that's what we're going to do now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you guys to give me the vessels. And what I will do is I will show you those vessels on the chart. Okay? And then after I've done that, and I'll also show them to you on the schematic and, on, and show you some of the relevant... Um, figures in the, te in the lab manual. After I've done that, then what I suggest you guys do is if you, you know, if you didn't get a good enough look and you want to run through on your own chart, let me know. But if I did, if we go through on your own chart, then what you do is you go through it with each other. So what you do is, you know, you say to your partner, take me from the first afferent branchial artery to the dorsal aorta. She or, he, she or he will go through it, and if you get stuck, call one of us over to clarify. If, you, if it's really clear, that's great. Then you just uh, switch and the other person takes you through. And again, each time you number it off, I'm going to Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go from, in this case, we're going to take the fourth afferent branchial artery and we're going to take it to the dorsal aorta. So if you look here, there's the fourth afferent branchial artery. Um, and so where does that afferent branchial artery flow? It flows into the hallbrank. Now, let's just review this again. On the shark, you have one demibrank and four holobranks. This is a demibrank because it includes an interbranchial septum, and uh, it includes one demibrank, one set of primary gill lamellae. The other four are holobranks, one, two, three, four holobranks, because they include an interbranchial septum and two sets of primary gill lamella, one on either side, one on the anterior, one on the posterior side of the uh, interbranchial septum. The, f the uh, posterior wall of the final gill chamber, or gill pouch, the two things mean the same, is skin. And uh, so the interbranchial septum uh, supports the gill ray, which supports the gill lamellae, the primary gill lamella, and also supports the gill rakers, which keep gunk out of the, out of the, gill, out of the gill pouch. Okay, so in this case, um, In this case, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to switch because I, I'm going to make some less work for myself. I'm going to switch. Instead of doing the fourth afferent branchial artery, I'm going to switch to number two. Okay? So number two, um, which uh, of the interbranchial septa um, does it flow into? Afferent branchial artery number two. There it is. No, no. The, so it flows into the first hole of right? Yeah. yeah, so it flows in here. Now, if you look at the diagram on page 97, can you see the afferent branchial artery flowing inside the um, interbranchial septum? Point to that. Yeah. It's right there, and there's only one. It's not paired. So now let's look and see if we can see it. And the reason I switched number two is you can actually see it without my doing any work. Um, It's a bit tricky because it's an uninjected vessel. I did see it a minute ago. Where's it gone now? Do you see it right there? I oh, need to get a dissected microscope. I mean, I need to get a, a magnifying glass. I think I see it. Do you see a little vessel right there? Now that I've switched, I'm not sure I see it. Turn on the light. Can you shine a light on it from the... Do you have a little... Do um, I? Yeah, let's see. I'm not sure I see it anymore. Let me take some scissors and make it a little more visible. Now that I've switched, I don't see that. Clearly. Usually I find that cutting this um, to make it a, sort of a nice new cut makes it a little more... Can we have the light back? Yeah, there it is. It's really, really clear. See it right there? 
really clear. See it right there. See that little that little vessel right there? Look, it's it's an uninjected little vessel right there. See it? Right there. Oh yeah. Right there. Right there. Okay. Okay. I mean, you're not gonna have to identify those. I'm just showing it to you because it's kind of cool. If if you if it's not your shark and you have a good view, I'll show it to you in your own shark. Yeah. So so that vessel and you can see on the diagram, it runs right through a uh, little canal in the cartilage, and you can see it here lying right in the cartilage. Now, it gives off branches, and those branches run down the, the gill ray. And they, it gives off one branch for every single primary lamella. You can see all the primary lamella here on both sides. So it gives off branches on both sides of the gill ray. What are those branches called? So are they traveling to or away from the gill? Are they to the gills? Because remember, the business part of the gill is the is the is the capillary, uh, which is which flows in the secondary lamella. So it's just flowing down the gill right now. It's on its way to the gill still. So what's the term that means on its way to? Afferent, branchial, because we're still dealing with the gill. What's a vessel that's slightly smaller than a artery? Arterial. Arterial. So it's the so these vessels are the afferent branchial arterioles, and there's one for every single. Uh, primary lamella, afferent branchial arterioles. Now you guys choose. You can decide: Are we going to the anterior or the posterior side of the interbranchial septum? Anterior. Okay. So now we're in this side, and you can choose at random. It does make a difference, though. Uh, now you don't have to say. You don't have to number your afferent branchial arteriole. Just list it. But depending on whether you choose anterior or posterior, that it depends where you end up after you come out of the gill. We'll see that later. Okay, then where does the blood flow? After it flows into the afferent branchial arteriole, what, where does it go next? Into the gill Into... These are the small vessels. The tiny vessels on the secondary lamella, what are they called? The smallest vessels in the body. Capillaries. So it goes into the capillaries. So you can see that it gives rise to capillaries, a couple of capillaries for every secondary lamella. Now the blood is flowing through the secondary lamella. Did, can you see the theory on this? Add water and see if that helps. Um, so then, do you want to give her, give her a hand, sort of seeing the... Oh, no, don't, no, never mind, we can go through this. So the blood is flowing into the capillary, and now this is where this diagram is useful. The blood flows from adjacent to the gill ray, because it flows out of that afferent branchial arterial, into the secondary lamella towards the gill pouch and um, it's flowing through a capillary. The water flows in the mouth of the shark into the gill pouch, and the water flows um, from the area adjacent to the gill pouch over the secondary lamella towards the gill ray. So they're flowing in counter current. The result is that fresh water hits almost fully oxygenated blood, but there's always a higher partial pressure in the water than the blood, so the blood continues to take up oxygen, as the increasingly deoxygenated water flows over the gill, it's hitting staler and staler blood. And finally, when it's almost given up all of its oxygen, it encounters blood, deoxygenated blood coming out of the afferent branchial arterial. So along the entire time they're traveling countercurrent to each other, uh, the, as the water is giving up more and more of its oxygen, it's hitting increasingly stale blood with no oxygen. And so there's always higher partial pressure of oxygen in the water than the blood. So the exchange takes place all along the time that they're traveling uh, in counter to each other. Yeah. Um, so then the blood enters um, the outside margin of the, second, of the secondary lamella and starts flowing up this vessel. So what is the name of that vessel? And you can see these vessels now because now they here you can see them. They they are at the bottom of the um, uh, at the very bottom of the gill ray. They're not at the very bottom of the primary lamella. They're too small because they've only drained a couple of capillaries, so they don't have any latex. As they move up and become bigger and bigger because they're draining more and more capillaries, they become big enough to get latex in. So here you can see there they get you know you can see the um, these vessels clearly outlined one for each of the primary lamella. So what are they called? Where are they flowing? Efferent, branchial, arterial. Okay. 
So these are efferent branchial arterioles flowing up the primary lamella, draining the, the capillaries. And they flow at the top, they flow into these vessels. So we're here, we went to the second one, we went anterior. At the top it flows into this vessel. That vessel is a traumatic artery, okay? Now, this is where things get a bit tricky. We went anterior to the anterior um, set of gill lamellae. Here's your traumatic artery. The traumatic arteries are named based on where they are relative not to the interbranchial septum and the gill arch. They're, not, they're named where they are relative to the gill pipe to the gill chamber. In this case, this traumatic artery is on the posterior wall of the gill chamber, therefore it's called the post-traumatic artery. So because you went anterior, the blood flows into the post-traumatic artery. If you had gone posterior, then it would have flowed into this pre-traumatic artery here. So that's a bit, you know, that can be a little misleading. But it's flowing in this post-traumatic artery, and now you can see it here. It flowed into the second, into the second diaphragm branchial artery through the gill circulation, which is not shown in this schematic at all. It's shown here. Now it's entered a post-traumatic artery, which is shown here. That post-traumatic artery unites with the pre-traumatic artery on the other side of the gill pouch, and they combine to form a traumatic loop, and the blood flows into, what's this vessel? First afferent branchial artery, very good. If you had gone, and if you'd said we're going to go posterior, it would have flown, it would have flowed into this pre-traumatic artery, which would have united with the post-traumatic artery here, and then it would have gone to the second. I have a question. Yes. So the blood flows into either the pre- or the post-traumatic arteries. Yes, and depending on which side, which set of primary lamella. Okay, and then joins to form the traumatic loop, but it doesn't. The blood doesn't split off into both post and pre no. and then join. No. Was right. Yes. But here, yes. <laughs> so. So. <It's> out. <laughs> So now, just to just to add to, to so something that's a little a little confusing, which you can avoid if you're careful and not be questioned on. Um, look at this little arrow here. And if you if you're given the fifth afferent afferent branchial artery, and that flows to the final hole of brain, and you make the mistake of going posterior, which brings the blood into the pre-traumatic loop, this pre-traumatic loop here. Where does that go? Where does that go? Into the post-traumatic artery. Yes, so what you've got, we don't make a big deal of these, but I'll point it out. The blood, there's also cross vessels, which bring blood from the pre-traumatic arteries into the post-traumatic arteries. And um, the, the, this happens for all of the interbranchial septa, but you can completely ignore it unless you bring blood into the into that if you're if you're asked to follow the blood, where the blood flows from the fifth afferent branchial artery and you take it to this set of gill lamellae and into this pre-traumatic artery then you get you add some uh, then that blood flows through these cross vessels into the pre-traumatic artery into this post-traumatic artery and then to the fourth um, afferent branchial artery you can completely ignore that uh, in your answers if you are given the fifth bathroom branchial artery, just take the blood anteriorly to this um, uh, post traumatic artery. It's post traumatic artery, and then you don't have to worry about that. I'm just mentioning that because that is part of the way the blood flows. But I won't specifically question on those cross vessels. They are there for, to give you correct blood flow. Okay, so but, does that, okay, so just to review quickly, so the fifth? The fifth apron one goes into the hollow branch via the via the post-traumatic. So the first, the fifth, uh, which one are you talking about? The yeah, fifth. The fifth. Yeah, the fifth afferent branchial artery goes into this final hollow branch. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, and then where? And then it goes into the post-traumatic. Well, then depending on whether, which, and depending on whether it's set, it serves this set of primary lamella or this set, if it goes posteriorly to the final um, set of primary lamella, then, then it, it flows into, into the pre-traumatic artery, which doesn't unite, it doesn't form a traumatic loop, because there's no blood vessel on the other side of the, of the gill chamber, there's just skin. So in that case, it has to flow through these cross vessels into, a, into this post-traumatic artery and then into the heart uh, for effort. I will not request you specifically on that blood flow. 
Um, so all we need to know is that it goes into the post We don't need to worry about this part technically. Like, yes, if you're given the fifth half, I would definitely recommend bringing it to the bringing it into you know through the gill and into the into the post traumatic artery. Much much easier to do it that way. Otherwise, you have to add in a couple of additional. You don't have you don't have to number them. So when you're given those, the only numbers you have to use are the one I give you one. And then you have to number your efferent branchial artery. You do not have to use numbers for the traumatic arteries. You don't have to use numbers for the arterioles at all. Just leave off the numbers. So those, yeah. So the thing is, whether you, depending on whether you bring the blood to a pre or post traumatic artery, that makes a difference because from the pre traumatic artery or the post traumatic artery uh, of any vessel, um, it does end up in different efferent branchial arteries. 